Yu-Gi-Oh! can be a complicated and expensive game to get into. There are thousands of cards, and just as many confusing rules. What should I buy? How do I play? In this series, we're going to go over everything you need to know and acquire to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Join me in answering all the questions and much, much more. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Beginning to Winning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rain Knight Gaming. I'm Rain Knight, and this is Billy. In today's video, we're going to do a test hand and walk you through the phases of a duel. Whoa there, Billy. Somebody is rambunctious today. We're going to briefly go over the phases, but if you need more information or just want to study some, I'm going to put a link down below to a great website. While you're down there, like and subscribe, and if you ring the notification bell, I'll get Billy Wendy's. Okay, let's get started. Billy, do you remember the card zones that we went over in part two? Good, then we won't need to go over it. But just in case any of you people out there need a refresher, just go back to part two of my series. Go ahead, I'll wait. Two hours later. Welcome back. Now first things first, you're gonna need to shuffle your deck. But this is a little different than normal playing cards. You never wanna riffle or bend your cards very much because if you mess them up too much, you won't be able to play them at all, and some of these cards can get pretty expensive. There are two different ways of shuffling I recommend. One is a power shuffle. It's pretty easy, but very effective. All you do is make a whole bunch of little piles, just like you're seeing on the screen right now, and then stack them back up. The other way of shuffling is a normal shuffle. You just take a couple from the front of the deck and shuffle them into the center, just like you're seeing on the screen. One tip, always shuffle back to front with your card sleeves, otherwise they can get nicked up. I'm still not the best at shuffling, but practice makes perfect. After you're done shuffling, offer to let your opponent cut your deck. And always remember to cut your opponent's deck, it's very important. Then we decide who gets to go first. Most of the time you'll roll dice, or play paper, rock, scissors online. Let's just say that we won the roll. Okay, do we want to go first or second, Billy? Okay, let's go first. Now we begin the duel and both players draw five cards. Then we go into the phases of the game. First up, we have the draw phase. This is where the turn player draws their card to start their turn, unless you're going first, in which you don't get to draw a card. You also, going first, don't get to do a battle phase. After that, we have the standby phase. Nothing is required of either player during the standby phase, but you can activate traps, play quick play spells, and activate monster effects. Once you're done there, you can move on to your main phase one. This is where you play most of your cards. You summon your monsters, set your traps, activate your spells, and just set up your board to try to win the game. Next, we move on to the battle phase. The battle phase isn't required and you can skip it, but if you do, you go directly to your end phase, bypassing your main phase too. The battle phase is split up into four steps. The start step, the battle step, the damage step, which includes calculating damage, and the end step. I'll link to the manual just so you could read this over in more detail later. After your battle phase, you have the option of moving into main phase 2. Most actions you could do in main phase 1, you can perform in this phase as well. After you're done there, you move into your end phase. This is the final phase of your turn. There are some card effects that can't apply during this phase. But when you're done, you turn the duel over to your opponent and start their phases. The phases now repeat until someone wins the duel. Okay. Enough jibber-jabber, let's get into a duel. There are lots of different ways to get into our combo. It all depends on what cards you start with, but as long as you start with two of these cards, you can normally get to our normal end board. You can start with Baby Sarasaurus or Petite Pteranodon, Misk, Ovi, or Fossil Dig. We play four babies, three Misk, and three Ovis. We also include three Fossil Dig, which is basically a search for any of those cards. You're also good if you start with Oviraptor and Lost World. Also, if you start with one of our extenders, you can get to our extra special end board. Let's start with Soul Eating Oviraptor and Miscellaneousaurus, and then we'll say we have three unknown cards. First, you want a normal summon Oviraptor, and activate its effect to draw a dinosaur from your deck to your hand. But watch out, our opponent's gonna try to play a hand trap, Ash Blossom. This would stop your draw. But we have a counterplay. We can play Miscellaneousaurus to make all our dinosaurs immune to card effects. 
Now we can continue our play and get our baby Sarasaurus from deck to hand. Then we're going to activate Miscellaneousaurus's second effect by banishing himself, one dinosaur, to summon a level one dinosaur from your deck to the field. We'll be summoning the shiny boy himself, Amadorn Archosaur. His effect will then activate, popping the baby that we had just searched. With the baby being destroyed, you can search a level four lower dinosaur from your deck to your field. This is where we'll want to get our second baby Sarasaurus onto the field. We also get to draw our double evolution pill off of the Animorn Archosaur effect. Next up, we're going to activate Oviraptor's second effect. By destroying a dinosaur on the field, we'll get to bring a dino from the graveyard to the field. Let's destroy our baby Sarasaurus on the field and bring out our baby Sarasaurus in the graveyard. Then we get baby Sarasaurus's draw effect to summon Giant Rex onto the field. Now we're going to Link Summon Link Karibo using our Animadorn Archosaur. Something to remember right here is we're starting to summon non-dinosaur monsters. Misk's effect does not help you here, so watch out for your opponent to try something. We're going to continue Link Summoning using our Link Karibo and our Giant Rex to make Anaconda. But we're going to hold off on activating his effect. We have other monsters to summon first. Now it's time to activate your double evolution pill that you pulled long ago. You're going to use your Link Karibo and your Rex, banishing them both to summon out your ultimate conductor Tyranno to the field. Then your effect of Rex is going to activate, bringing him back to the field. Now we're going to use our two level fours, Rex and Oviraptor, to Xyz summon into Logia or Dulka. Now it's time to activate our Anaconda. Pay 2,000 life points and pull out your Red Eyes, Dark Magician, and Red Eyes Fusion to summon Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. This combo can be improved slightly if you have one of our extenders in your hand from the beginning. If that happens, you can Link Summon Baby and that extender to make IP Mask Arena. And then on your opponent's turn, Link Summon your Anaconda and IP Mask Arena to make a 2 negate Apollosa. Because we went first, we now can't go into battle phase and we move directly into our end phase and pass turn. Our opponent's going to draw their card and enter their standby phase, start to play. This is when our negates are gonna come into effect. As they play, we can use Ultimate Conductor to flip all their cards face down. We can use Logia to negate a card effect and destroy the card. And we can use Dragoon to stop a card effect. After their main phase one's over, they would move into the battle phase if they have a board that can compete with ours. Then main phase two, and then their end phase. And then it goes back to you and you draw your first card. There you go, Yugi peeps. Now you have the very basics of dueling. The best way to learn is to actually get out there and play people, in person or online. From Billy and myself, thanks for watching Beginning to Winning. We'll see you next time. See you.